Hello, everybody, and welcome to YEG Pivots. My name is Ingrid Schiffer, and I will be your host today and every day. Um, today, we have a great lineup of guests. Uh, very excited to uh, showcase. And uh, without further ado, we'll get going, um, get started here. Our first guest today is Kirsta Frankie, and welcome, Kirsta. I'm just in here. So now she's connecting to audio, can't hear me. Let's give her a second. I know Kirsta's coming to us live from the public. And uh, for those who don't know, well, Kirsta's going to tell us all about it. Um, she. <laughs> this is very, very live. That's awesome. Hello, Kirsta. We're good to go. Can't can't hear you. I think it's still connecting. There we go. Hey. How are you? Oh, good. I'm great. And, we and are. tell me, <laughs> where are you? Where are you coming to us live from? Uh, I'm coming to you live from 108th Avenue and 124th Street for the 124 Grand Market that starts at uh, four o'clock this evening. Oh wow, that's so, exciting news! And is yeah, this you can kind of see the street here. I'll just give you a turnaround. And then yeah. you can... Oh wait. <laughs> so we're setting up tents on the street, and it's about two blocks of programming here. Oh wow! Yeah. Now, is this your first market of the season? No, this is our third actually. So we started on May 14th, which was the uh, the day that everything for Stage One reopened. So it was a bit crazy for us, but it, it worked. So. That's great news. Now, Kirsta, you're um, with two different businesses that are in the North Edge. You're with Wild Heart Collective and as well, a huge initiative that I know that the community is eagerly anticipating the public. Um, yes. Tell us a little bit more about that and, and maybe even before you dive into that, how you even got into it, a little bit of the history. Take it away. All right. Um, yeah. So I guess nine, nine years ago, this is our ninth season for the one, two, four grand market. So this was our baby and our first kind of uh, launched uh, event under Wild Heart Collective, which is a, an events and productions company in Edmonton. We also do some small business consulting uh, for branding, marketing initiatives, working with a lot of BIA zones like Neva, for example. Um, but yeah, so we do lots of different stuff under the Wild Heart brand. And then um, kind of through working over the last five years with the market, we realized that uh, food vendors here, so small companies in the city needed a commercially approved facility to be producing their their food products out of. Um, we're a public market, so it's a little bit different from some of those Alberta approved marketplaces where you can bake or, you know, cook out of your home. So um, what we did is we kind of married a bunch of really fun concepts with the public to provide access to small to medium food companies to 12 commercial kitchen spaces and uh, mm -hmm. one one federally approved kitchen space, which is pretty cool and unique to the city. So um, we'll have about 13 spaces at the public where folks can produce out of about 10,000 square feet of production space and storage space. And then eventually we'll have a front end facing side to the business, which is going to be our retail cafe and event space in the uh, central McDougal neighborhood. That's super exciting. Now, this this is definitely a labor of love for you. You've yes. been in um, the food kind of uh, industry, I guess, for a while now. How many years exactly has this taken to oh. get to this point? So the public itself uh, has been about three, three and a half years in the making. So um, we really kind of started getting momentum on the project and uh, once some grant funding started coming in from all levels of government. So uh, there was a bit of seed funding and people started believing in the project. Um, and yeah, so it's about, we're on year three, <laughs> but this is year nine for Wild Heart. So we've been working closely with uh, a lot of our clients, our food-based or small businesses here in the city. Um, and I myself have been in the food industry for, for over 16 years. So Amazing. I've worked in hospitality. I've managed restaurants. I've, uh, <laughs> I, I have uh, my Bachelor of Communications from Grant McEwen, which didn't really get put to good use until I started my own uh, company. And yeah, so that's kind of where I ended up with the market here. Wow. Well, no small feat and uh, definitely our hats off to you in, the, in that regard, because uh, I'm sure many of us understand the challenges that come with uh, setting up a small business um, and then, you know, having to kind of outfit a, a building to suit your your vision there with 12 
um, commercial kitchens. I'm, I'm sure there was a lot of uh, hoop jumping or process. I, I, I'm sure it's it's involved and it's uh, yeah. a timely process. So um, or time consuming rather. So so <laughs> you bet. Much, uh, huge accolades to you in that regard. So now Thank tell you. me a little bit more about um, how you know recent events this year have impacted kind of your your rollout, your vision. What challenges have you have you had to overcome? Yeah, actually, there's been quite a few, but um, starting with kind of the farmer's market and, and events industry, I mean, we saw some massive changes hit us really, really hard. So um, as Wild Heart exists, we do a lot of large festivals and events in the city. So about uh, anywhere from a dozen to 18 events a summer season. So between May and uh, May and October, it, it's our huge season. And then we run 39 market weeks in between there because we have a Thursday location for the market and a Sunday location. So um, we didn't think we were going to be able to open the markets uh, after the kind of notification came down about festivals and events uh, from the CMO. You know, it was crippling. 70% of our business is based around um, these large productions that we work really, really hard on. Sometimes we have clients that we work with for up to two to three years um, just on one large project. So uh, it was devastating and it has been devastating. So we're trying to recover the best we can. At least we were, you know, able to run our marketplaces this year because we're deemed essential. So that's been a way that, uh, you know, we're still able to work and I'm still able to put a team together and put people to work. Um, but there's new regulations at the market. So even here, you can kind of see we have fencing set up. We have lots of signage, barricades. So we have to control traffic that's coming through the market. We can only have 50 people per section uh, and we have two blocks. So each block can have about 50 people per section. Uh, we have to follow, you know, a lot more rigid rules that have come out from the city of Edmonton and the Alberta Health Services Authority. So that's been fun and new. Uh, I'm not wearing a mask right now, but all of my staff are wearing a masks on site and we have regular sanitizing protocols cleaning power hours those sorts of fun stuff and then you know a few changes to how our vendors actually operate as well so um some people don't want to take cash at a time like this some people have put in plexiglass for their their vendor tables and uh we can't have sampling on site so some of those really fun things that we love about farmers markets and and going and getting out in the community haven't really um been allowed to happen this year so it's definitely a weird time, but everybody's in great spirits and we're just trying to keep, uh, keep people happy, keep customers happy. And we saw about 600 people come out on our first day, which wow. was great. We, we have about an average of 1200 to 1500 people who visit us each market day and we only run for about four hours. So you can imagine how trying to fit 50 people per, you know, 20 minute sections in to a space, uh, would be difficult so we're just managing lineups now we're managing queues and um yeah but it's been it's been good we have a great team here so i'm, I'm happy to say that things have been flowing rather well fortunately well it's admirable and i'm, I'm sure there's probably going to be a period of adjustment um you know one of the things that i think many enjoy are, is the whole meandering through a market uh taking into account that now you have some restrictions on how many people in a certain area um you know kind of move we, you need to move people along and it's it's a it's going to be a little bit of a different vibe um yeah but, but it's admirable that you are all in good spirits and and definitely you know pivoting um to accommodate <laughs> uh you know these these changes in our times um absolutely me, thank you yeah what i mean the purpose of our show we really want to be spotlighting um not only the innovation but really drawing attention to those local businesses and finding any and every way to support them um, mm -hmm. as a community. What can you maybe just let us know a little bit of what uh, visitors to your market can can expect? Um, yeah. what to look for a couple shout outs if you like. <laughs> so, um, you know, a lot of people love us. I'm all good. Sorry, still trying to manage traffic here. <laughs> a lot of people do, you know, uh, love us for the fact that we're not just uh, market organizers, we're festival organizers. So we think about a little bit loud here on the street, sorry. We think about quite a bit of stuff when uh, when it comes to accessing a site and enjoying a site and enlivening the public realm through events and markets. So uh, I'll even just give you a little quick glance here, how we've yeah. set up our, our park space that's right at the market. So as you can see, we have little flags. This is where we queue anyone who's coming into the market. So wait times are anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes at most right now, which is pretty good. But that's where we put about 100 people, uh, sorry, 50 people once we've hit our 100 person maximum inside the street. Um, so we've kind of thought about the 
ingress and egress of traffic and how people kind of really flow through not just our marketplace, but a public space. So keeping the sidewalks clear for residents and really working with the business community here on 124th Street as well. They, they are a BIA area, which is similar to Neva. And um, so there's a lot of things that um, are great about these BIA zones. There's a lot of people rallying together and a lot of people wanting to work together in a time like this. So we're really happy to have that happen. Um, I think I lost my train of thought though with how loud the traffic was. What was, what was the uh, question in short again? Let me answer it directly for you. I think I lost your train of thought too. I, um, <laughs> well, good. I, I have, uh, some hammering happening here at our makeshift studio. So, um, kind of, yeah, jarring. Um, so we were talking about how, uh, you know, everyone's going to have to adjust, uh, kind of a different vibe. Yeah. And, and I was saying if there was any, you know, particular highlights, anything new this year, yeah. I wanted to yeah. point out to, um, to our, our viewership. Okay. to look out for when they come to the market. Perfect. So um, I think with respect to our vendors and programming, that hasn't changed. People can expect uh, the same curated mix of vendors down here. So we have about an average of 55 to 60 vendors, including uh, three to four food trucks um, each wow. evening. So from four to eight, you can come down. And, you know, before it was a bit of a block party vibe. We'd have live bands playing and, you know, programs for the kids and those sorts of things. So those are reduced right now. Um, so not something we can do. Uh, but are looking forward to doing once things ease up a little bit. So uh, we have a food truck area that's separate from the remaining areas of the market. So folks can pick up dinner, take it home for their family, be a hero. Um, tonight we have Calais, Mexico, which uh, Juan is one of the members at Neva too. So he's a, he's a North Edge business. He comes along to most of our events, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have Meat Street Pies here. They're like English style pies. We have Drift Food Truck, which is a super popular truck here in the city. They were one of the first trucks on the street back in like 2011. Yeah, they're um, vegan, aren't they? No, they're not vegan. That's oh, sailing on. About, Rest in yes, peace. My, apart, my apologies. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. My apologies. Um, but Drift does have some really great vegan and vegetarian food too, but they have things like pork belly sandwiches and buttermilk fried chicken uh, treats and their famous Drift fries. So that, that's pretty fun. Um, and then, you know, really we have everything down here at the market from uh, locally distilled spirits and locally made uh, beer and wines. Mm -hmm. um, we also have, you know, sweet treats like cookies and cupcakes and those fun, you know, uh, honey, uh, lots of primary producers here. So we have a, a greenhouse on site. We have farmers on site so you can pick up your weekly salad. Um, mm -hmm. You know, your whole, your whole grocery shop, essentially, we have fresh eggs, um, fresh cheese, um, Lots of vegan food too, lots of vegan and vegetarian foods, uh, some specialty providers that have gluten-free options. So um, lots of diversity. And That's then of course, yeah, yeah. And of course we have a lot of our artisan vendors as well. So jewelry, clothing, art, design products. So it's a really, really solid mix of all those things. And how we really set ourselves apart as a market is we ensure that we're curating to quality. So you're not going to find three tenths of the same sort of vendor. You're just going to find one really good vendor representing that kind of product so we you know we don't want to be 200 vendors long <laughs> and i'm really glad at a point like this because we've already had to increase our space 50 percent that we don't have 200 vendors on the street because that would be a lot to handle oh i yeah well and so now going back to the public um when can we expect to to have that open when do you oh, have an anticipated yeah. date i mean is it too ambitious to to be asking for one at this time or no um so we're kind of phasing the development right now it's a 15,000 square foot project so quite big um we have started construction and we're hoping to have our back of house kitchen spaces open by this fall so fall 2020 um and then our retail space open before christmas so um we're you know a few months behind there's been some stalls on the grant funding side with everything during covid there's also been um some stalls with construction and contractors you know there's been layoffs and furloughs so that's impacted the project a little bit as well uh, but we're still moving really swiftly and doing what we can to make sure that we're keeping those hammers in hand um, right now to get this project launched hopefully September fingers crossed so September. Um, okay. yeah and where can we expect to see an announcement that you'll be opened up and when like Ooh. assuming we don't remember in September um, where where yeah. should we be tuned in any Facebook pages that we should be liking um, you bet. So that notice. Yeah. So actually I would encourage folks if you want to learn more about the project because it's really diverse and really in depth. 
Uh, we have a website, it's called jointhepublic.com. Uh, so if anyone's interested in, in maybe utilizing the services we're going to offer there, or if you're just, you know, a, an eater and a consumer and you want to figure out more, um, you can check out jointhepublic.com. And actually, really exciting news, this week we launched our box delivery program. Uh, through the public. It's called Public Offering. And it's uh, basically a mix of our one, two, four grand market vendors. So some of the, the best curated products, um, we pre-curate the boxes for you. And there's actually uh, four different options and four different sizes that you can choose from. So if you're a vegetarian and you want a vegetarian box and a bunch of tasty veggies from the market and you know lots of different products like uh, vegetarian burgers or vegetarian dumplings and pierogies and those sorts of fun stuff. Uh, we've curated that all on our website as well under the shop button. So be sure to check that out and see uh, some of the goodies we have going on in the box. And then we're offering pickups at the public as well as the one to four gun market starting June the 4th. So next week. So that ordering windows just opened up, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So I know um, literally my next question was going to be like, <laughs> do we pick it up? Do we get it delivered? How does this yeah. work? So join well, the public.com look for the yeah. public offering and sorry Kirsty, you were going to say something yeah and i was just going to say um we have lots of social media sites to pay attention to as well uh, our branding is fantastic we're working with a company called make space they're a, a downtown outfit and and our partners in the project but i would definitely check out our uh we have a twitter so it's public food hub uh and as well on uh instagram public food hub so we do have a facebook page and that is also the public edmonton um, but there's lots of fun stuff going on right now. We're managing like five different social media accounts. So if you're also interested in the one to four grand market, it's just at one to four grand market across all of the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram profile uh, platforms as well. Perfect. And so I, I'm assuming there'll be some cross pollination. If we tune into the one to four grand market, we will know what's happening oh, yeah. on, the, on the other stuff as well. You bet. So this is kind of a, uh, it's a merger. So it's basically the public's working with their sister co, 124 Grand Market, to, to bring these products to folks who might not be able to make it to market, might be, you know, things like immunocompromised and they just want to do a curbside pickup. Delivery options are going to launch in July, but right now we're just really assessing what people want out of this box and trying to see kind of on the north side of the river how we can serve folks um, for the time being and then really expand the program, hopefully even outside of the city at that point so that's super exciting and yeah. again commendable i think that's fantastic you've definitely found like a niche that people um you know that want to support local you're making it super easy for them and still getting that variety i think the public offering is um it's aside from being super catchy it's uh <laughs> something that's very much needed i think you nailed it when you said you know there's immunocompromised people that might not feel comfortable in kind of that public space so um, yeah. amazing that you're doing that. Um, thank you. So I know, I know that you, um, so unfortunately Kirsta cannot stay with us at the end for our little recap. And I know that you're on a very tight schedule. So busy today, uh, beautiful <laughs> day for a market that being said, oh, um, yes. but before we wrap up your piece here, Kirsten, thank you again for joining us. Can you maybe offer some advice to, um, entrepreneurs that are thinking about starting a business in this crazy time or those that are already, um, you know, kind of dealing with an existing business, uh, facing some similar challenges. What, what kind of wisdom can you leave us with out of your extensive experience? Whew. Okay. Well, I would say, you know, this is actually, um, going to be a time where we're going to see a lot of small businesses kind of just sprout into something beautiful. So I would encourage anybody who might be on the edge of teetering between, you know, do I start that business and start that passion? Um, right now is kind of a great time to do that. And there's a lot of outlets that are going to like myself and the market and the public that would be here to support you, um, in those ventures. But I also think, um, there's a lot of supportive, um, there's a lot of supportive landlords as well as, you know, BIAs like Neva represents, um, that are going to be here to help and walk you through their process. And Neva has been so, so great to provide resources to all the businesses so I would say, you know, if you're looking to also set up a brick and mortar, come check out Central McDougal, come check out Neva and, you know, that whole area there because the rent is, um, I would say, very affordable in that neighborhood for as, uh, you know, close as we are to downtown. But also there's a passionate, you know, group of people willing to support you uh, through those steps that it's going to take. And right now also the city is offering a lot of different fun stuff for licensing and kind of removing a lot of that yucky red tape that, um, stalls a lot of small businesses from getting started. Um, so I would say, you know, authorities like the city and Alberta Health Services are really willing to work with people right now to get them through um, those opening processes. Um, 
for anyone who's, you know, still stuck it out like us and throwing up the fists and putting on the boxing gloves, just stay strong and, and be brave because right now it's a weird time. It's an, an uncertain time, but I think we need to hang on to community now more than ever. So reach out to people if you feel like you could use a hand. I, I think knowing that people are always going to be here and ready to help and walk you through things um, and lend a hand is kind of the best advice because we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing without our vendors and we've walked them through as much as we can, but um, you know, they, they are very thankful to have someone like us walking us through this too. So walking them through this too. So yeah, I would just say reach out to your community and, and band together. That's beautiful words uh, <laughs> and, and no, truly inspiring. And, and you're absolutely right. So thank you again, Kirsta. Super appreciate Thanks, taking the time today. I know, again, we know how busy you are. Hopefully <laughs> uh, many of our viewers will go down tonight to check out the market. Uh, remember do. that one of the best ways to support local businesses. And remember that uh, Kirsta and Wild Heart Collective and the public have done all the heavy lifting and selecting the best of the best. They've curated a great selection of vendors. You just need to show up and, uh, and, and enjoy, right? What, yeah. What's being offered by Absolutely. these local businesses. So thank you again. Um, thank you. You have a great day and we're you as well to our next guest. Um, thanks again. Thank so you. Have fun, everyone. Hope to see you. Four to eight. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Kirsta. Bye. Now, before I admit our next guest, uh, Carl with Strainbows, uh, I just want to apologize to everyone for the construction noise. Um, unfortunately, I do not have an accommodating landlord. And despite, uh, you know, a very respectful request to cease hammering during our live broadcast. Unfortunately, they've been unable to accommodate my uh, request for one hour of uh, not hammering. So um, that hammering is brought to you by my building and I apologize in advance for the disturbance to our interviews. Moving on, I am now welcoming Carl, Carl Krangia, Krangia, Carl Krangia with Strainbows. Did I, did I say the, did I say your last name right, Carl? Hello, can you hear me? Connecting to audio, all good, all good. And this is how we do broadcasts. Wireless, Zoom, on the fly. Hello. This is how we roll. How are you doing, Carl? Good, yourself, Ingrid. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us today, everyone. We have Carl. Uh, Krangia? Correct. Kurjan, Kur, Kur, I said it right first time. We'll leave it. We'll leave it at that. And Carl, you are with a business called Strainbows, located in the North Edge. That's correct. So um, thank you so much for making the time to join us today. Super appreciate it. Um, very much looking forward to hear a little, hearing a little bit more about Strainbows. So what can you tell us about your business and then maybe even a little bit about the history? And maybe before you start, tell us who that cute little face was. That's my little son, Zuden. He's adorable. Hi. How cute. Hello. And I also so have cute. a seven-year-old daughter. She's somewhere inside being creative. Uh, so father, watching the computer. She's watching her computer. Yeah. So cute. Okay, Carl, tell us more about Strainbows. When did you start this business? Uh, you know, we started last August in North okay. Ed. We were we we started construction a year before that. It took a while to get our license, um, but yeah, it, it took us. Uh, we've been open since last August, and it's been a been great since we've been there. It's a nice area, and it's getting better every day. We're right across from you again. Yes, yes, you are. We're neighbors. Um, yeah, and so, for those who aren't familiar with Strainbows, um, you tell us a little bit more about your business and the products that you offer. Uh, yeah, we're a cannabis, uh, retail cannabis store. So we sell dried cannabis, free rolls, oils, edibles, drinks, topical creams, and extracts. Wow. Like hash, uh, all sorts of extracts. So we got all sorts of stuff. Okay. And so, um, tell me, how did, you know, um, the changes that we've seen this year impact your business? When did you first hear about it? Did you have to make some decisions on whether, you know, how you were going to, uh, you know, deal with staff or uh, mitigate Yeah, you know, uh, it, it, uh, at first it was definitely a big deal to, when you hear about it, it's, it's nice. It's something that you've, uh, 
we no one's ever faced. So we had to, we had no idea what, what we were facing absolutely at all. Um, and uh, once we did, we kind of, uh, we, it didn't affect us much in, in the way of staffing because we were kind of uh, full go the whole time. But we did have to uh, take precautions with like PP and separation, things like that. Uh, besides that, um, it, it wasn't much of a change. It was more of a change, I guess, for the customers because uh, we had to, the social distancing and that created a, kind of a lineup outside the store, not inside. So okay. uh, thankfully the weather, weather was nice at the time. That's good. And your business has been deemed essential. I think we had yeah. Uh, yeah. a conversation about that on a previous episode. So yeah. there wasn't actually any closures in place. You just needed to adjust in terms of kind of the safety protocols and yeah. okay. hours were the same. Okay. Wonderful. So that's good. And then, um, so have you had to, aside from, from those minor adjustments, have there, have there been any other, um, you know, significant changes to how your day-to-day -day business is going? Um, do you foresee any changes in the, in the coming weeks or months as to how you're operating? Uh, no, I mean, we, we did have to get the sneeze guards put throughout the store and things like that and make, uh, uh spots of separation, uh, barriers, things like that. But besides that, uh, I, I think that it'll be fine. Well, that's, that's good. That's a very optimistic, uh, outlook, which I think is we're, we're seeing a lot of, uh, it's kind of a pattern of optimism. Uh, people just basically taking the challenges as they come, taking business a day at a time and, and just, uh, it's it's tough to look too far out uh, these days, since you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, okay. Um, now, for those that may not um, be familiar with your actual location, so I know you're in the North Edge. You are on One Sixteenth Street. Is that correct? One, yeah, One Hundred Five Seven Three Hundred and Fourteenth Street. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wonderful. And so you said your hours are the same. Um, yeah. And you you have. Uh, on Google. Pardon me. The listed on Google. Okay. On the web page. Very Googleable. That's, that's yeah. great. Um, so now what made you want to get into this kind of business? Well, I've always had an interest in cannabis. I, uh, I previously, I had, uh, an ACMPR grow license. So I did a lot of growing, so I had a lot of interest in it. And then once it, uh, retail became available, it was kind of uh, something that I wanted to do. I, uh, have a background in inventory management, inventory control. Kind of. So, uh, I kind of use it. Now, speaking of inventory management, has there been any kind of um, supply impact uh, in in light of of our current situation? Um, where, in terms of like shortages or increase well, in volume? No, I, didn't, any, I, I didn't see anything. If anything, we saw more SKUs come onto the market. There, I, I didn't see even a hiccup at all. AGLC handled it pretty well. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so they, and they, they were right on it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We still had inspectors come in, and I mean, they handled it very professionally. So it was a, uh, it was pretty good. They they did a good job. No, that's wonderful. And now, in terms of kind of, um, you know, any these challenges that you've overcome opening up your business, um, you know, applying your experience in inventory management um and and kind of your interest in in the field of cannabis and that pun was not intended uh yeah. but but what what advice might you offer for those uh watching yeg pivots in terms of um you know whether they're starting a business or currently managing a business i know your your industry is pretty regulated um what kind of advice can you can you offer i can't offer any advice <laughs> <laughs> wrong person Oh, well, that's okay. I just leave it. I just take it one day at a time. Okay. Well, and that's that in itself is, is yeah. uh, very wise words to, to live by. So that's good. Um, what can, what else would you like to mention before we, we wrap up your interview segment? Oh, no. <laughs> You're too laid back. Yeah. It comes with the business. I can imagine. Oh, Carl, you're funny. Um, okay, so for those who want to support local business, check out Strainbows located on 116th Street. Carl, thank you for joining us. 114th uh, Street. 114th Street. Sorry, did I say You're on 114, aren't you? I am. 
<laughs> I'm also excessively laid back in this interview. Yeah. Um, no, so 114th Street, located yeah. in the North Edge. Um, you know, no impact to the hour. Bright, bright yellow building with cannabis leaves on the front. Can't miss it. Can't miss it. Excellent. So there's parking. Uh, yeah, right is right wheelchair there. accessible? Absolutely. We have wheelchairs come in. We have uh, uh, the electronic ones, rider. We have everything. We, we're very dog friendly too, animal friendly. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's huge. You have a giraffe. It's more than welcome. <laughs> I recently <laughs> got a dog and I never realized uh, the importance of dog friendly places until you yeah have a dog. as long as your dog is friendly and is on a leash yes we're good he's super friendly he's yeah. and he's well behaved right now at my feet so very oh, good so is a risk broadcasting yeah. with the dog <laughs> but uh okay, so friendly. thank you very much carl uh appreciate your participation very much and That's um nice. look forward to uh just to, to seeing you again in the future and uh, thanks for joining. If you're able, I ask that you just hang out in the waiting room and we do kind of like a little recap at the end. So if you're able to do that, that'd be great. And I'll just, uh, if you can. I'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I have someone waiting to play. So. <laughs> oh, oh, fair enough, fair enough. Priorities, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Dad, dad so, is number one. Well, on that note, before yeah. I let you go then, let me ask, have you noticed the difference in the amount of time that you um, allocate to, let's say, work versus personal life? Way more towards the, yeah, personal. Now that the, my daughter's home from kin or grade one, mm -hmm. yeah, we spend a lot more time together, I got to say. See, that's, that's heartwarming. Wait, so it's kind of... <laughs> what a cutie. Okay. Um, well, thank you again, Carol. And uh, we'll be sharing your uh, social media handles and whatnot after the show so that everyone can connect with you online and support yeah. local. So thank you. Thank you. Take care. Take care, Carl. Our next bye. guest. Bye. Bye. You want to come over and say bye? Say bye. 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 Good to see you. Have fun playing. Bye. <laughs> okay, bye. See you. Um, cute. So cute. Um, our next guest. Um, so last week I had um, Lance Johnson from Ample Media ask an excellent question about the new logos on the backdrop. So again, as, as I'd like to gently remind everyone, uh, wouldn't make a good weather person. I'm not really good with that green screen uh, coordination. But anyway, uh, YEG ambassadors, who are they? What do they do? And how do they tie into YEG pivots in the North Edge? Um, so I had promised that I would bring on an ambassador to kind of fill us in on that. And I'm happy to share that Kieran Morin will be joining us now to tell us a little bit more about what exactly the YEG ambassadors do and how they're supporting businesses in our area. So welcome, Kieran. Kieran is connecting to audio, so we'll give him a second there. And in the meantime, I'd like to remind you all that this is being broadcast live on Facebook. So if you're able to um, comment, please do so. Feel free to share the video with your friends. Um, the whole initiative here is about supporting local. And so the more eyes that get on, on these businesses that are being spotlighted, the better. And that's truly the, the goal here is to support local businesses, um, you know, spotlight their, their innovation and, uh, and help them in that regard. Here we go. Kieran, Kieran, you're on mute, my friend. I can't hear you. I cannot hear you. How about Here now? We go. Hey, yeah. there we go. We figured uh, it out. 21st country. Here we come. <laughs> We are back out on the street for the first time in a couple months. Uh, Yay! Yeah, I know, right? That's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's, so, that's, that's one of the big things we had to do, you know? So tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. So all I've said uh, is that you're with YEG Ambassadors, and we're going to learn more about what the YEG Ambassadors do and what they're all about. So fill us in. Sure thing. So the Yeg Ambassadors is a collaborative program with uh, the North Edge Business Association, uh, the City of Edmonton and REACH Council for Safe Communities in Edmonton. And uh, kind of our focus here is uh, helping uh, small businesses, sort of connecting them to resources with uh, 
a bit of an emphasis on safety. Uh, and yeah, that's uh, that's basically what we're doing is uh, supporting the small businesses in the North Edge and other PIAs. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now Kieran, um, you know, back back in the day, back in 2019, before our world went to, uh, to a whole new level of crazy, um, what what did your average day look like? And then we'll compare it to to today's world. Yeah, so like I was just saying, uh, one of the big changes we had to make for the uh, COVID-19 pandemic is uh, we spend most of our time on the street. And uh, lots of our work is engaging with uh, businesses directly, sort of filling in that gap between you've got the services coming from the, the city, you know, but there might not be connecting with all the businesses. You know, there's uh, sort of barriers there language and otherwise so we would go around and try to connect people in person right obviously we can't do that another big part of our work is uh what i'm doing right now which is uh walking around the neighborhood doing uh environmental scanning and uh what that does is gives us an idea of uh we're looking for sort of indicators of safety and cleanliness in the area things like graffiti overflowing dumpsters and we take and record all that information and uh, we send that along to 311 in the city so that they can uh, deploy some resources to, uh, you know, rectify those situations. And at the same time, uh, we keep that data to uh, kind of be informed about what safety looks like in the area. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Kieran, I have to interrupt you. Are you sure. actually talking about safety while jaywalking? Because I think that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, my friend. It's so a sorry. quiet street and great. You're not supposed to blow my cover here. <laughs> it was just too ironic to not point out. I'm so sorry. I'm going to take, take the city logo <laughs> jacket off right now. <laughs> <laughs> well played sir well played um, sorry carry yeah. on carry on so yeah no worries so uh yeah so a lot of our work ended up being uh you know we just can't do it so we shifted back to the online space so we've been doing sort of uh lots of social media content trying to push out some of the supports coming from the government check us out at yeg ambassadors uh, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter at Yag Ambassadors. Um, as well, we've got the, the newsletter coming from uh, the North Edge Business Association and uh, trying to get the folks who might not be on email. We got a WhatsApp group as well. And we're just kind of, you know, instead of giving that information in person, we're just trying to make it really easy, digestible, actionable kind of things for businesses to do and uh, getting that message out there. Now, if I'm correct, when, when this whole thing started, uh, was it not your team that put together one of the most, if not the most comprehensive um, assembly of resources on a Google Doc that ended up being shared uh, quite extensively? Am I correct? Well, I'll let you sing the praise there to, to you know, pretend I'm eating humble pie. But yeah, that's uh, one of the things we did there. Is, uh, I, I do want to acknowledge that, Karen, because I think that, um, you know, it's very easy to have information uh, just be so scattered that it doesn't become valuable. And I think that it's commendable, the the detail and, the, and how thorough that document was. It was literally laid out. Uh, resources for businesses, for the individual, um, pointed them to like live links. Uh, you guys did a tremendous job and um, it's just, I, I can't give you enough accolades, um, but hopefully everyone uh, can can take note because I know that that took a tremendous amount of work and you guys were able to turn it around, keep it so organized um, and, and distribute it so quickly to all of the um, members of the association. And I know that it was going even beyond that. So just hats off to you in that regard. And I, I just wanted to make sure that that's completely acknowledged because you guys did an incredible job at a time where it might've been excusable to be a little scattered and messy. You guys pulled it together and were like exemplary in the organization and distribution of valuable, tangible and timely information. So there, so there buddy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you said it there. I mean, uh, we really recognize that 
you know, I mean, it's our job to kind of understand these resources and be able to explain them to people and, you know, share them. And we're having a tough time. You know, I mean, this is all new for everyone, right? So, yeah, we really recognize the sort of need to, uh, you know, have a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. right? You want to know what's what, what can you get support from the city, from the province, from your community, from the national government, from the federal government. Uh, so yeah, thanks again. That's, uh, that's, that's much appreciated. I hope that, uh, I hope that really helped people. I, I absolutely believe it did. And that was truly very sincere. Um, I want to unpack a little bit about what you said there, that it was tough. And I think that one thing that I don't want us to glaze over is how tough it's been for people. And I think one of the things we want to highlight is that everyone has had to adjust whether they like it or not. And so, um, Tell me how, what were some of the changes that you guys experienced at your office? Uh, you know, did you have to start working from home? Um, what did that look like? What were some of the challenges? If so, um, tell us more. Yeah, so uh, around, oh, I think that was March 13 or 14th. Uh, you know, it seems like an eon ago, but uh, I think it was a Friday. We uh, made the decision to work from home. Uh, and that was about the same time the city made similar decision, Reach made similar decision. So uh, we all packed up our laptops and headed home. And, uh, you know, the team is very much, it's a small team. It's uh, the three of us. So we spend a lot of time being in, you know, everything is teamwork. Everything is done collaboratively. And it's a heck of a lot easier to do that in person where you can just, you know, what's the other person doing? How are you doing on this? It's an, it's a two second communication, but uh, you know, it's, it's a learning curve for sure. Uh, I think it's, you know, we all had Zoom and Skype and everything installed, but we're not, you know, it's, we like the human touch, right? So you got to adjust to that. And uh, it was a little tough for a couple of weeks, uh, trying to make sure everyone's on the same page, but, uh, you know, we got into a bit of a rhythm too. And I think uh, one of the really, uh, what made that easy is knowing that people need help and that we can provide something that's gonna be useful. It's gonna be actionable for people. So there's a sense of urgency and, uh, you know, we can work together a little bit better when there's a, there's a real need. Mm -hmm. Kind of gives you something to rally around. Exactly, right? and. You know, I think people are, have different impacts. People are going to be impacted differently. People are going to, you know, in all ways, health, financial, et cetera. But it is true. We're all in this together, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Either we like you know, it or not. Yeah. Sorry, this bus is going by now. No, it's all good. This is the reality of, of, um, of, of how it how it goes down i mean where there's oh, yeah, and, uh, you're still on the street there and i thought oh that's a great idea it is and i love it so right now you're actually coming to us from the north end right are you on 109 yeah. street there is that is yeah that we're you're... we're just on 109th street uh just past uh oh what's the restaurant here chinese restaurant chowling restaurant and uh you know for instance these guys have done a great job uh pivoting to their online delivery services and uh, you know, they're getting more uh, sort of contracts with those apps and uh, you know, every, everyone's uh, been doing a great job. We've been going around to check uh, businesses are open and you know, how they're, how they're feeling about the situation and uh, people are, people are positive. People are coming back and uh, you know, I think uh, things are really moving forward. That's and, and I think that's, that's the most important part is having that attitude that, uh, you know, if we stay positive, focus on the positive. Um, it's really going to reflect through on our businesses and our initiatives if we're kind of doing it from that, that good place, right? Um, so question for you, Karen, moving forward, what, what does the next few weeks look like for the ambassadors? Uh, do you guys have any news on whether you're back to the office? Um, are there going to be any protocols that need to be put into place now that you know, if you're able to go visit people face to face, 
I noticed you're not wearing a mask, so I'm just asking, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So, uh, you know, right now we're, uh, no, we actually go next week. Yeah, I just crossed. Um, you know, we're, in, well, we're not wearing masks right now because we're, uh, we're just staying outside and we're making sure that we're keeping our physical distance. But uh, if we're ever going inside, you know, a business, uh, we got our masks right here. Okay. And we got the hand sanitizer and, you know, trying to follow all those protocols. And, you know, it's the, the whole idea with the masks too, right? I keep you safe, you keep me safe. So uh, we're trying to follow that. Uh, not sure when we're going to be back in the office, but... Uh, you know, we've gotten pretty good at this work from home thing. And uh, the big thing for us, I think, was being able to be back on the street. So we're doing a bit of that now. Things are opening up a little bit. So, yeah, just trying to be mindful of the of the distancing. And, uh, of course, hand washing protocols. You know, every time you enter or exit somewhere, there's a doorway protocol. You're washing your hands or sanitizer if that soap and water is not available. But uh, yeah, I mean, we got to set an example as well, right? Absolutely. No, and that's commendable. Um, so now in terms of the area itself, what can you perhaps tell the viewership about, um, you know, any changes? Are there any changes to the area? Um, any sort of uh, things that we need to be aware of as businesses in the area? Um, you know, I, we just, we're just uh, talking to Kirsta and so she was kind of, you know, sharing with us the, the, the changes they've had to implement in terms of managing uh, people at the market, anything similar okay. in terms of uh, the area um, itself, that anything that we'll be able to see or things that you want uh, members of the community to be aware of or to help look for, I'm not sure that you tell me. Yeah, so hmm. I say definitely, uh, you know, trying to make sure that uh, businesses have got, they've got some signs, you know, and they're trying to explain, you know, what they're doing and uh, how they're handling the situation. It makes it all feel a lot better when, the, you know, someone's saying, yes, we're taking this seriously. We're putting in measures. Uh, these are the things we're doing. Um, hopefully, and uh, we've taken a pretty strong role in advocating for these uh, changes from the city, uh, patio expansion, retail space expansion. Let's get these businesses out into the streets. The permit fees have been waived. This is an excellent opportunity, right? I mean, it's true. Every crisis is a bit of an opportunity here. If you ever thought about what is this, uh, what if I did do a sidewalk cafe or what if I did try to do a bit of a you know, at night market or, or take, take some of my, uh, my retail stands out on the street, this is the year to try it. And we've got, uh, you know, we've got some beautiful murals in this area. We've got a lively street and we can definitely get people, the more space you got, physical distance you can keep for your customers, the more customers you can get into the area. And uh, I've always been a fan. Hey, sir. I've, hey, not too bad. How you doing? And, uh, you know, we've got, we've got a real opportunity. And, uh, you know, we've got a main street here. We can, we can showcase that. So I think the physical sort of the look of the street might change as people try to take advantage of this. And absolutely, for any business person or, uh, uh, you know, reach out to us if you're curious about what could that look like? What 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 might that bring for my business? We're here for you. That's that's our job. That's wonderful. Uh, so for those that are just tuning in, which I hope not, but uh, you know, big <laughs> ambassadors, Kieran Morin, telling us about how um, they are supporting businesses in the North Edge area. Kieran, one quick question before before we start wrapping up here. Um, now. We've seen, we've heard uh, about certain, you know, traffic changes, temporary changes to the flow of streets, um, pylons going up to create larger spaces for people to honor social right. distancing or physical distancing while um, being a pedestrian or a bike. Um, I know that we had a bike lane uh, put in a 
couple years ago for 105th Ave. Are there any expected changes or additions in the area um, that are expected to kind of accommodate again this um, six foot protocol um, in terms of, you know, maybe expanding on existing bike lanes, anything visual that, uh, you know, members of the community should be on the lookout for? So as far as I'm aware of, and uh, we've done a sort of whole tour of the area, uh, the city hasn't determined that uh, any of the roads or sidewalks, uh, it's necessary to uh, have that sort of lane close off like they have, uh, I think, Saskatchewan Drive. Uh, I'm sure there's other examples. Just for uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there's none of that here right at the moment. That might change as the city notices there's more foot traffic. We're conducting a pedestrian uh, pedestrian count later this week or early next week. Uh, as part of all of our efforts uh, to back up some of these things with numbers and data. But uh, the neighborhood revitalization uh, or neighborhood renewal, sorry, is uh, is ongoing in our area. So there is gonna be some, tr some construction. Uh, so it's not COVID related, but uh, 106th Ave, east of 109th Street and north of 107th Avenue, 116 to 101st Street. There's going to be some. Uh, there's going to be some construction. Uh, it's all good, positive. I mean, if you want to see, this yeah, come on. This beautifully renewed uh, street. This was done last year, and uh, you know they did a great job. So there's a bit of disruption there, but uh, no, it's. Uh, trying to get business back as usual. Well, that's excellent. Kieran, thank you so much for taking the time to come on. And um, actually, before I let you off the hook, uh, do you want to share <laughs> how you're supporting the Yegg Pivot Show and um, and why you guys get your logo on the backdrop? And tell us a little bit about that. Oh, yeah, darn straight. We got to put our logo on everything. Uh, <laughs> so my uh, my coworker there, Sammy, is uh, is helping Ingrid with, uh, well, help yourself with, uh, with some of the back end work and uh, reaching out to businesses who might want to get involved and trying to get some of the other BIAs involved too. Uh, so, you know, any any kind of initiative in the North Ed that's uh, connecting businesses, that's uh, we're, we're going to be a part of that. That's awesome. Now, if someone wanted to check out your resources, you had mentioned a link before. I'm going to get you to mention it again. Um, where can they find the list of resources that you guys had assembled um, at the outset of the COVID situation? Yeah, so you can check our social media. Okay. Uh, it's on Facebook. And uh, if you check on the northedge.ca, the website, okay. and there's a tab for COVID-19, and there will be access to that, uh, that Google Drive and uh, as well as some posters from the province, you know, wash your hands, keep distance, those kinds of things. You can print those off. If you're wondering how to say, you know, to your customers, practice social distancing, wearing masks, those kinds of things. It's a great way. It, it's coming straight from the horse's mouth. It's coming from AHS. It's, it's, uh, it's a good resource. So any of those resources, check our social media, Facebook especially, and uh, northedge.ca, the website there. Wonderful, thank you, Kieran. And then again, before I let you go, I'm noticing a lot of beautiful, old, mature trees. Where are you right now? And uh, uh, and is this a neighborhood that has space for anyone considering starting a business? Because as you mentioned, great time to entertain a sidewalk cafe or to uh, really? take advantage of kind of how the the, the city is encouraging you know uh, businesses. So. Where are you and, and could someone take a look at that area if they were thinking about starting a new business? Yeah, so right now I'm on uh, 110th Street and 106th Ave. And yeah, you're absolutely right. We have these beautiful, mature elm trees that I know personally, when I think of Edmonton, when I, when I think of home, that's what I think of. And uh, for business opportunity, I mean, North Edge has always been a great place to start a business. You are close to downtown, you're connected to LRT and transit. Uh, there's lots of opportunity for smaller businesses. And, uh, you know, it's affordable rent compared to some of the places downtown. 
looking to start something up. This is a great, great place. And of course, we have to plug ourselves here. The North Edge Business Association and the Egg Ambassadors, you've got some resources to help you and connect you to whatever you might need to start your business. If you're thinking of starting a business here, reach out to us and we can connect you and we can we can help you do that. That's amazing. Now, speaking of um, helping people with resources, was there not an initiative that you guys were involved in in terms of kind of not eliminating red tape, but helping guide those through the somewhat uh, you know, more involved processes of attaining permits and whatnot. You guys act as kind of that bridge to communication uh, with the city. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as I mentioned earlier with the, the sort of restrictions or the fees, sorry, on uh, for patio and uh, retail expansion, we were definitely advocating for those, uh, you know, be cut some of that red tape. I mean, it's a no brainer. We got to get outside. That's the safest place to be. And uh, certainly, you know, the city does have a lot of programs to help small businesses. There's a storefront improvement grant. There's a business improvement grant. Some of those are a little difficult to navigate, or maybe it's, it's a bit daunting for one person, small business owner. You don't have a lot of time. Your time is very precious. So yes, we do uh, as much as possible. We try to act as a bridge to, uh, to, to help people uh to help people access those programs. And and I shouldn't say last question because I'm pretty sure I said that for the last seven, so sorry. Um, but I couldn't I'm help getting it. tired, Ingrid. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time, eh? I thought you had a cameraman, what? <laughs> um, little selfie stick, no? Uh, no, Kieran, what, what is, a, I'm just looking behind you there. Is that is that parking on the street? You get street parking? Is there parking? It, it might even be free parking. Is that free street parking? <laughs> that is free two hours street parking. Come and get it. <laughs> <laughs> Come and get it while it's hot. Come and get it while it's hot. That's excellent. Uh, Kieran, thank you so much for humoring me and my uh, endless questioning. I do appreciate you taking the time to um, candidly share with us the work that you're doing with your team. They're not with you, are they? Well, I, got, uh, I got one tag along here. But oh, but I guess physical distancing yeah exactly yeah, fair enough. <laughs> that's why i don't have a cameraman <laughs> fair enough well thank you again for joining us um typically we do a little end of show wrap up but my uh the last two guests were unable to join us for that so it's just a really busy day for everyone um which is why again i appreciate you making the time to join us and again everyone um check out the northedge.ca click on the covid tab and you'll see all the information that's been aggregated um, most diligently by the Egg Ambassadors team, who are also in place to help you navigate the unknowns of, uh, you know, municipal processes. So thank you, Kieran, to you and your team for all your support on the Egg Pivot Show, for all your support to local businesses um, in our area. And and actually, I happen to know that you guys have helped a couple of people out of our area that didn't fall into a, an actual business zone. So thanks to you for that as well. Um, just goes to show you guys are operating from the right place. And um, any last words before we wrap up the show in terms of um, anything, really? <laughs> uh, thinking of open a business, as, as Tommy Douglas said, dream no little dream. Oh, that's beautiful. Thanks, Kieran. And thank You're you, welcome. everyone, thank for you. watching. Everyone, have a safe week. We'll see you next, ep uh, next episode, next week for episode five. And, um, and that's a wrap. So everyone, have a great day. Uh, stay safe and stay well. Support local. Okay, bye.